Hello guys, welcome back. I hope you are doing great. In this video, let's go through the Pandas data frame agent. Until now, in Langchain, we have an agent which can interact with only one data frame, right? But in data analysis, often we require multiple data frames, right? We need to go and interact with multiple data frames. So now in Langchain, there is an agent where we can use that particular agent to interact with multiple data frames. So first, I will show you how you can use the agent to interact with single data frame agent. I have already done this in my earlier videos also. Just as a recap, I will show you that in the beginning. And then we will follow with an agent which can interact with the multiple data frames. Let's get started. By the way, before I go through this particular notebook, I would like to thank one of my subscriber. I was planning to buy a new microphone, but then he reached out to me and sponsored me a new mic. Thank you again. Starting today, I will be speaking in a new mic, meaning that the sound quality must be better than the previous videos. Okay, so now let's go through the notebook. So first, we need to set up the environment. Again, as I as I went through the last uh, video or several other videos, I will not run the cell, but I have already run the cell and I will walk you through that particular thing because I will provide this notebook in GitHub. You can go through there, clone the notebook and run it by yourself. First, we need to set up the environment, right? For setting up the environment, it's as normal we do. We need to install the necessary packages and then we need to have the OpenAI API key because we will be using the language model from OpenAI. So if you don't have the API key, please go to this particular website and get the API key when you run this particular shell and it asks you to input OpenAI API key. Once you provide that, you are good to go. So now, as always, we import the necessary class and the large language model wrapper here. And then we are using the titanic data set for this particular notebook. When you run these cells, we should have a data frame. This data frame has 891 rows and 12 columns. Now let's go and create the agent using Langchain and let's see and let's ask some questions to the to the agent right so here is the single data frame agent example first so this agent can interact with single data frame we create the agent and create pandas data frame agent which we imported up here here as you can see here we need to pass the large language model and then the data frame and the var was equals to true because we want to see what is happening when that particular cell is running or the agent is running right so here we just ask how many rows are there it went through that particular data frame and it knows that it needs to ask d of dot shape and it provides us the shape and it's zero because when we do d of dot shape it gives that it as i showed you here i printed d of dot shape and it gives the number of rows and the number of columns right but we just ask the number of rows here so it just took the first one and provided us the answer. So that is how the agent works, right? So it's smart enough to know what is what it needs to ask or it needs to go through in that particular data frame. Just to illustrate that, I asked here how many people have more than three siblings. There is nothing mentioned that which column it has to go which data frame it has to go oh, well it knows the data frame because here is the agent and we are passing the data frame otherwise how does it knows that right but then it went through that particular column and finds the answer for us so that is how the single uh, agent works like right? only with one data frame but what we want to achieve here is let's say that we pass multiple data frames and the agent must go through that multiple data frames and fetch the answer for us. So in order to accomplish the multiple data frames, what I have done here, let me expand this cell here. What I did is first, I just check here df.info to know that, okay, how many rows are there or how many columns are there, right? So here, I just want to go and see the age column. As you can see here, it just has 714 rows, meaning that there are some null values in that particular column. What I did was create a new data frame. So df1, I just take the copy of that previous data frame, df.copy and always 
please proceed in this direction that always take a copy of the previous data frame it's easier and the data frames are isolated from one another and what i did is i in the df1 age uh, df one is dot fill na meaning that i want to fill the missing values in that particular age column by what by the mean of the age so what this is going to do is when it sees the null values in that particular column first it will calculate the mean of the age and then it will fill that particular number in all the missing rows right so that is what it is doing here that means that we have a different data frame df and df1 what we can pass now is this is really getting good each day and each and every day we go through because there are many people contributing to the lang chain and we, we we can use it to do many cool things here i just created create pandas data frame agent there is nothing different here but then here is the large language model and in a list you can pass the two data frames df and df1 and you can ask how many rows in the age column are different so this is just the question we asked here right it says that okay i need to compare the age column in both data frames because it knows that we are passing two data frames and there is the python repl being going behind the scene and it says okay length of this not equals to length of the previous one and it finds 177 so yeah that's how it calculated and say that okay 177 rows in the age column are different yeah because those missing columns or missing rows which has uh, null values we impute it so that is the order that you need to remember if somebody is imputing meaning that somebody is replacing the missing values with or something else with something different so yeah that is how it works and and what i want to still go through here is i want to create another data frame so that i can pass just to illustrate you that we can pass many data frames not only two what i'm doing here is just taking the copy of df1 again and then I am saying here new column, right? And I'm saying that D of age, take the age column and multiply all by two. Then we have a new data frame, right? So if you can see here, I have a new data frame D of two and the column that I just passed is here. As you can see here, age multiplied. And as you can see, age is 22, is 44, 38, it's 76, meaning that we just multiplied that particular column, right? So now I can create the agent again, where it says that, okay, it's the same thing, create pandas data frame agent, and I pass the three different data frames. And I ask, are the number of columns same in all the data frames? It needs to go through all the data frames, right? As you can see here, the agent is doing something here right so first there is a thought it says i need to compare the number of columns in each data frame and then it went to the first data frame it went to the second data frame it went through the third data frame and it finds that okay there is something here right there is something different here and it says no the number of columns is not the same in all the data frame it's really good because as a machine learning engineer myself, we need to go through different data frames also because we need to do some kind of exploratory data analysis also, right? So it's it's always difficult to find, okay, what is in one data frame, what is not in another data frame and all the different things. But with the help of these kind of agents, we can quickly find, okay, what is in one data frame and what is not in another data frame or similar to these things. Well, it is not that hard just to write the python code also but maybe if you are new to data science field or maybe you don't know that much of python how to manipulate different data frames or such kind of things you can quickly create an agent and just run some queries on top of that particular data frame or many data frames yeah that's all for this video i hope you learned something new today yeah thank you for watching and see you in the next video